So we'll just save these for the next meeting. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have Mr. Palladino, I think. Yeah. Request for a uh, student field trip. Scott? So Mr. Palladino has uh, saved one of his advisors uh, a trip from uh, is she in Dartmouth that she lives? Uh, uh, Rochester, man. Oh. Mr. Palladino, if you sit next to Mr. Sweat, then you should be able to pick up on that microphone. Okay. Actually, why don't you take my seat for the moment? Okay. For those who don't know, this is Principal Palladino of the high school. Uh, Thanks for coming out. Uh, I know it's, the conditions are terrible, but thanks for having me. Right. Um, the art department um, wanted to be here tonight uh, to present a proposal uh, for a trip uh, to New York in April. Um, they have a very busy itinerary uh, for a one-day trip. They're going to leave early in the morning. Uh, their goal is to uh, get down there as early as possible in the morning. Uh, hopefully, avoid the traffic. And uh, they're looking to get into two art museums, um, one in the morning, uh, one in the afternoon, and to see a Broadway show. Wow. Uh, all in one day. I, I saw the itinerary. It, it's an early start, and it's a, a, a late showing at home. Um, so it, it's going to be a packed day. They're going to uh, try and make it as, uh, as economical as possible. Um, they're very excited. They're doing some fundraising. They've received some grants, um, and, and they're very excited about uh, tying this into their curriculum. And I'm excited to uh, endorse it as well. Is there any idea how much it's going to cost, Scott? Um, the, the, I'm just going to estimate. But when I spoke with her, uh, she's hoping to keep it in the forty to fifty dollar range. Uh, she does have, um, as I said, some grants that she did receive. And uh, she's trying to keep that cost down as, as low as possible. But it's going to be an awesome experience for our students, and uh, and we're excited about it. Do you do you think um, students with any kind of a financial um, need might um, might not be able to go to this? No, we're going to utilize the uh, waiver system similar to it as if it was an Good. athletic uh, uh, user fee. Good. So it'll be the same waiver system, and we'll we'll find some. But there are opportunities for fundraising. There, there, there is an opportunity for fundraising, so if someone wanted to hustle, they could probably uh, have a little pocket change uh, after the fact uh, and have the whole uh, trip paid for. Very good. Any other questions? A couple. Um, are they going to continue to use the way they're getting down there um, as the transportation around New York City, or are they going to be accessing the subway system? Do you know? I believe... Um, the, the, everything is very close proximity to, to Broadway, and uh, I'm not sure on that. I'll have to get back to you on that. But I, I believe everything is very within walking distance, is, is what I understand. What day is April 1st? Do you know? That's, I know. I should, I know <laughs> I, 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 the I reason why it. I ask is that. I have it. Because they're taking a bus, correct? <laughs> they're not Co utilizing correct. the Amtrak. Friday. Thank you. It is. Thanks, Christian. Okay. Friday. Four hours to the city is, I, I would just have to take a look at that timeline again. I, I mean, I, I, it, it takes four hours with no traffic whatsoever, and right when they're getting in there is rush hour traffic. I, I mean, they'll be stuck in the tunnel for an hour. Yeah, I explained to her she may need to move that time up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, having a brother that lives uh, 20 minutes outside the city in Connecticut, uh, four hours is a, is a good clip just to get to his house, so I, I agree. Right. And then the last thing is, I, I, whenever I... Um, see proposal links. I always want to know what they're going to do with it. I know it's going to be woven into their curriculum, but are they going to be doing a presentation at an assembly? Or are they, I, I know that's probably a little bit much, but um, are they going to be doing any presentation, any report, anything like that? Uh, I believe it's more of a tie in to what's going on in the class. Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be a report, but I believe it's more tying in, uh, culminating units in, into the curriculum and utilizing this as a way to show students there's, there's more to art than just what happens in room 256 and 260, um, that they can move on and, and use this as a, uh, a stepping off point to a, to a college career and, and possibly eventually uh, to, an, to a, an occupation. Okay. 
And just by what you said, I think that that's why it's even a greater opportunity to maybe add something onto the curriculum or something about this. So then not only are they just kind of weaving in the curriculum, they, they have something they can walk away with, sure. you know, whether it's a picture book or a be portfolio. Interest. Portfolio. Right, well, definitely. <laughs> Part of the graduation requirements. So. What, what, what is the absolute <laughs> time that you need a decision from us? Uh, she was hoping for uh, tonight because there is some some booking that needs to occur to make sure that they have uh, the seats available specifically uh, transportation and obviously the Broadway show um, I think the museums is a little more flex time that that's available for those um, well I'm, I'm, I'm all for enrichment activities and I think that this would be uh, to uh, go to two art museums in New York City and um, and a play um, for a lot of our kids, it'd probably be the first time they've ever even done that. So it's an enrichment activity that's certainly, I think, worthwhile. Um, but I do hear a couple of areas of concern. One, well, one, you addressed that there would be no financial hardship. You'd figure out a way to do it. Secondly, Jeff had a question as to um, what was it exactly already? I forgot. You, were, you must have been reading my mind. I didn't say anything, but I do have some questions. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm saying. <laughs> of course, Ron had one in terms of tying it into the curriculum sure. and so forth. So. Um, I suppose we could give you a tentative approval tonight if we wanted to, uh, and then you'd get back to us with the answers to those questions. Sure. Jeff? Uh, I love, as, uh, as Cliff says, I, I think these kind of enrichment activities are great. I'm glad to hear it's a Friday, <laughs> uh, because it would seem to me that some of these kids yeah, might They're really going to be in good shape the next <laughs> day. Yeah, but the next day they won't be much good in class. Um, but I tend to look at things sort of a, on a risk-reward basis. And so I called Mayor Menino's office and asked him if there was any art in Boston, and he assured me there was. Um, just joking. Uh, but obviously, the there's a museum in Boston, more than one. Yeah, exactly. So I, I have to ask the question: Has have there already been field trips to Boston to see the Gardner Museum and to see the wonderful museums that exist in, in Boston? I know that this year they had a chance to go to the, uh, the Fine Arts Museum of Fine Arts, and there was another uh, glass museum that they went to uh, earlier in the year. Um, but for this group, they, they've never had the opportunity to, to really leave the state as far as for field trips. Um, Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. It, it just this is um, from previous experience. Um, I recall walking around the middle school one day and going into a sixth grade classroom where a particular teacher had been talking about immigration and one of the students stood up and asked if they could go to Ellis Island. The teacher looked at me, I looked at the teacher and said, if you can raise the money, then I'll okay the trip. Well, they raised the money and the teacher said to me, if we're going, you're going as a chaperone. <laughs> and um, we left here about 4 a.m. in the morning, um, drove down to New York, went to Ellis Island. I, um, I think <laughs> we got there about 8. Um, we, uh, we did Ellis Island. We did uh, Statue of Liberty. We had um, dinner. One of the patrons, um, uh, somebody who owns a restaurant near him, at the time I uh, came along and uh, paid for lunch at the Carnegie Deli for all of the students and the chaperones. Um, and then we came back to where he am about 8 o'clock in the evening and we were exhausted, but it's a trip that those students will remember for the rest of their lives. Yeah, Jeff, so. I do, I, I appreciate your comments, <laughs> but, but. <laughs> um, there are very few opportunities to break out of your comfort zone. Um, I love the fact that as far as you can push it, push it. So if you came to me and said the students want to go to Italy, then I would I would be even more in favor of that if it could be paid for, if you know everything was in place. It's such a great opportunity for them to branch out as far as they can go um, and see because Boston. I know that it's still an hour away, but it's in our own backyard, and they could take their own opportunities and do that. This is an opportunity that they might not have, and if it's structured, if it's paid for, if we're not going to leave any student behind because they don't have the financial ability to do it, I, I do think uh, go further than New York if you can. And I think it's important. She, in, in, her, in, her, cl in her club, there's a, there's a group of kids that haven't gone further away than Rhode Island, so they're very excited to even 
venture even further away, and, and that's that's a fact. Um, there are a good percentage of students that have never been to New York, let alone New York City. And Ms. Dion is an art teacher that um, does stretch the limits of our youngsters' uh, imagination. Um, very creative. She's done a lot with fabrics, um, mm -hmm. with um, University of Rhode Island, and uh, so. Yeah. And of course, the family, uh, the, the uh, they'd have their permission slips in. Mm -hmm. It's ultimately it all, up to the right. parent to yep. whether or not they want the student. I'm glad it's a Friday. Uh, it was strategically planned that way. Now that I, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, do we uh, would a, a conditional approval be in order? Conditionally or give them approval? I've I've said my piece. I trust uh -huh. Scott. You know, what? leave it at that. You want to drive? <laughs> <laughs> then I'll entertain a motion. If anybody wants to make the appropriate motion. Um, sure. Um, I'll move approval, and then I just want to say that if you need chaperones, I'd, I'd be happy. There you go. You're in. All right. You're in. I'll send you the email. All right, great. I, I have a motion. Approval. This is for full approval. You're my condition. You're I'll be happy to do that. Is that correct? This is she's full approval. Jeff, we have, Jeff, a, we have a motion for full approval. Would you like a second? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, all in favor? Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Three zero zero. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll only go if I, I want to know about the portfolio that will yeah, tie it into the, the, the cur curriculum. <laughs> the be, output. Be Give them some worksheets. That's an easy one for them. They'll have it in the portfolio. All right. All right. Very good. Thanks, Thank Scott. Thank you. Um, Dr. Rubinovich, I believe you're up. Uh, um, everyone like to take a seat outside? Yeah, yeah that would make yeah. life a little bit easier so that we can use the screen. Um, Jeff, if I may, just as a member of the budget subcommittee, um, I want to add on to what Dr. Sylvia said about, you know, braving the elements um, to be here today so then we could do this presentation. I think that um, this was important for us to do, to be able to give the citizens um, of Wareham the opportunity to view this um, on our um, Kittle Access. Um, they're going to show it over and over again. Right, exactly. And that's what we heard tonight. They're going to show it over and over and over again. Um, and to also encourage um, everyone that after they do see it and if they have questions, um, that there is a public hearing um, or public presentation on the 19th right uh, that has been stated um, yet here is it officially in the middle school, um, we'll here where we are today in the middle school auditorium. Um, and to come with your questions, we encourage them. The budget process is um, lengthy. We know that it's I'm not going to say tedious, but um, we, we've gone through these numbers <laughs> over and over and over again. And so we encourage everyone to um, view this presentation, ask your questions. Please come in and um, have your questions uh, be heard on the 19th and hear from us directly. I guess I do want to add one more thing um, in, in light of um, those very appropriate comments. And that is, I think it's really important that when citizens watch this presentation, uh, they realize that this is not what this is not. Despite the size of the numbers that you're going to see, this is not a question of, of how much money this, the, the town will spend in total. Um, I don't think there's any member of this committee, and I hesitate to speak for strong-minded people, but I think it's fair, fair to say there's no member of this committee, and I'm pretty sure there's no member of the FinCom or the Board of Selectmen, who will be proposing an operational override to support any aspect of the town or the school's budget. So what you're, uh, what you'll be asked to ultimately decide at town meeting, uh, with the facts as presented by Dr. Rabinovich, is, is how we spend the finite amount of money that we have, um, and that's critical. So. Despite the size of these numbers, it's still a function of how we spend it, not how much we spend in total. Good. All right, let's adjourn to the auditorium. And then we'll come back up for discussion. Um, this is the uh, budget timeline, and um, it starts very early. Even though up on the screen it says that it started in December, it really starts in November at the individual building level, uh, where principals are talking to department heads, 
to teachers about what they feel they need within their school buildings. On December 7th and 10th, the principals, the directors, um, come to my office and present um, what they feel they need. The instructions that they received back in November was build a level service budget 